Easy. Equal misties. We are now going to look at a concept that is closely related to the conditional expectation. At time t equals zero, we learn the realizations of all the axes. For simplicity, suppose that there are only two axes. So we learn the realizations of x1 and x2. We want to use this information to make a prediction of u. Our strategy for deducing predictions from the observed axis can be expressed as a function g that maps each lowercase x1, x2 pair into a number, like so. When we discuss the conditional expectation, we impose no restrictions on the function g. We could choose whatever g we wanted. Now let's restrict the class of functions that we are allowed to consider. We allow only functions that can be written like so where b0, b1 and b2 are parameters that we can pick to be any value we like. Let's call predictions based on such linear functions linear predictions. To find the best linear prediction, we have to find the best parameters b0, b1 and b2. Let's call the optimal parameters b0 star, b1 star and b2 star. The optimal parameters minimize the expected squared prediction error. Then the best linear prediction is given by this. Let's denote it by u lin of x1 and x2. Just like the conditional expectation, it is a random variable. The concept of best linear predictions can be easily extended to allow any number of axes. As long as we are working with linear econometric models, such as the linear regression model, we will encounter best linear predictions here and there. They provide a way of describing certain dependencies between random variables that affect the statistical properties of these econometric models. For future reference, it's helpful to go through some cases that illustrate how we can use linear predictions to describe certain relationships between random variables. First, suppose that we are looking at the best linear prediction of u given a collection of axes. And we find that the parameter b1 star is equal to zero. In other words, the best linear prediction ignores the information provided by x1. This can only be optimal if, given that I already know x2, x3 and so on, x1 does not provide any additional information about u. If this is the case, then we should be able to make the same prediction about u if we ignore x1 from the outset. That is, the best linear prediction based on all the x's is equal to the best linear prediction based on x2, x3 and so forth. If none of the axes provide any information about u, then the best linear prediction will be the constant function that always predicts the unconditional expectation. The variance of the best linear prediction is, like any other variance, positive. It can be shown that this variance is always smaller or equal than the variance of u. Intuitively, this is so because the best linear prediction can replicate some but not all of the variation of u. The variance of the best linear prediction is zero if the axes are uninformative about u. We can use the ratio of these two variances to describe how much of the variation of u is predicted by the variation in the axis. This ratio takes values between zero and one, with the value zero indicating that the axis cannot predict u and the value 1 indicating that the axis can be used to predict u perfectly.